Here's part two of reassembling the TDO4 HLA. Now, I did this off camera because it was kind of painful. <laughs> um, there's a giant snap ring that goes, see right there, it goes around here to hold the cartridge into the cold side of the turbo. Um, there is a pin and a hole that you have to index around in here, so make sure you get that indexed right, otherwise you'll never get it to sit down far enough to get the snap ring on. I don't have snap ring pliers that large, so I modified this pair of uh, needle nose pliers. I kind of put a slight hook on the jaws there and use that to grab the snap ring to compress it. Um, Got a nice little blood blister on my thumb from the snap ring, releasing and pinching my finger between there. One good safety measure when you're working on these snap rings like this, especially the small ones, and you've got you know your smaller snap ring pliers like that, always wear eye protection. These things, um, I've had them fly and narrowly miss my face and hit other people and that type of thing so make sure that you always wear safety glasses when you're working with those snap rings um, or doing anything that could potentially launch into your face but anyway on a brighter note so we're rotating this around I don't hear any scraping which is good so we know it's centered um, one thing I did was when you get the snap ring in you can kinda push on this to get that o-ring to compress that's on the cartridge here um, you can kind of push it in maybe tap it a little bit with a hammer equally just tap it gently don't tap it hard because you could um, skew it one direction and have the compressor wheel hit the inside of your cold side which is not good we don't want that so um, the next step is to put this assembly into the hot side now, like I was telling you about on the cold side, the hot side also has an indexing pin. It pins right there. You can kind of see it there. Um, and then you got the hole here. So, very carefully, we're just going to slide this in. Make sure you don't make sure you don't nick anything and hit anything. Okay, then that pin's lined up. We're just going to kind of push it in and make sure it's seated well. Now, before you take these clamps off, I didn't do a teardown video, but before you take this off, I usually mark it. And I mark the hot side, and you can kind of see the Sharpie mark right there. Um, because the bolt and the nut can interfere with other components. So we're going to make sure that that's lined up well. And usually you can kind of just pinch these together. And then you have a little carriage bolt type thing. And make sure that's seated in. And you should have enough threads to start your lock nut here. Which we do. This is a 10 millimeter nut. We're just going to tighten that down. One word of caution here. Do not over torque this nut. You can kind of feel when it starts to uh, cinch down. If you over torque this, you will break the bolt here. Um, so just be careful with that. I'm sure there's a torque spec on this as well. But you can kind of feel it out so right about there's good just kind of feel when it snugs up and then go a little bit further you should be fine obviously I'd recommend using the proper torque specs but I don't know what they are so it's kind of difficult um, next up is the wastegate bracket threads on here with two 12 millimeter head bolts. The 
The bottom one's a little challenging to get started on there, but don't worry too much about that. Just make sure you don't cross thread these bolts. So we've got a 12 millimeter ratcheting wrench, which should work. Sorry, my hand's in the way. I know you can't really see what's going on, but now here you can see the wastegate actuator is actually flexing in. So what it's doing is it's compressing the spring a little bit to keep tension on the wastegate flapper. And these don't have to be uber tight. They do have lock washers on them, so just get them snugged up as best you can. Sorry about bumping the camera there. Not used to working with a tripod here for the camera, so... Okay, that's tight. Just double check this guy. Tight. So, that's together now. So our wastegate's on or actuator rather. Here's the wastegate flapper and the exhaust. And you can see the turbine wheel in there. And we're just going to rotate it. I don't hear anything scraping. So that's good. So we did something right. Next up we're going to do the coolant lines. I'm pretty sure I'm not very sure. These must go. So this goes like that. Okay, and the reason I can tell you that is this right here bolts on to this hole right here. So you can kind of you can take pictures of this stuff too and get it get it back together properly. Um, now we're going to put the banjo bolts in. Um, it has two copper washers. They're crush washers. You should reuse them. I don't. I've actually had a lot better luck not replacing them. It seems like the new ones always leak. So, um, our second one, I'm just going to put that in. And the way these go is you've got the banjo bolt, then you have a copper washer, then the banjo fitting, then a banjo or sorry, then the gasket. So we're just going to run that and I just drop the washers. Fumble. Where's my other washer? There it is. Okay. And it's the hard part is getting these washers in the same time here. So we're just going to kind of start that one, start that one. Now verify that this little tab here is sitting properly. Otherwise, if this was sitting over here, it, you'd probably bend something or you could potentially strip out these holes. So we don't want to do that. We're just going to make those thumb tight for now. We'll torque those down later. If you're reusing the crush washers, um, I tend to torque them over spec a little bit just to make sure that that washer is in fact crushing further. Um, I don't know if that's proper practice, but whatever, it's worked for me for years, so I try not to worry about it. Next up, you have your turbo drain pipe which I don't remember how it goes on. 
think it goes, I believe it goes like that. We're going to put it on like this. So it seems to make a little more sense. Okay. And replacing the gasket down there would be a good idea. Um, but it looks fine, so we're not going to worry about that. And we probably should have done this before. We'll just get a smaller socket and get in there and tighten that one. It's not a problem. So we've got that. Next up is the oil supply line, which is here. Same thing, banjo bolt, copper washers, like that. Now, before I put this one in, what we're going to do is get some oil. Okay. Just going to use some 5W30, that's what I run usually, so put some in the cap. It's going to make a huge mess, but we're going to pour some in the oil supply area. that. I'm going to spin the turbo a little bit and we can get some oil down in there. Yep, and there is the oil level dropping a little bit for us. Now the way these bearings work they're actually bushings, rather. That's what I like to call them. Um, the shaft, well, the bearing itself floats on a layer of oil, and then the turbo shaft itself also floats on a layer of oil. Now, this goes on here, like that, and then this little mount here like that. So we're just going to snug that up. And once we get this in the car, we'll tighten that down um, once it's all hooked up and everything. Because then that will allow us to thread this fitting in a little bit easier. And then we can move this around where it needs to go. Um, and then we can torque that down finally. So that's basically it. Um, like I say, I'm not a turbo rebuilder by profession or anything. I just like to mess around with mechanical stuff. But this is how I do it. I'm sure other people have better ways or maybe not better ways. So take it with a grain of salt. Obviously, if you have no experience with a turbocharger, make sure that you just pay somebody to do it. Or if you want to learn, get a, get a junk turbo and rip it apart and see how that works. That way if you mess it up there's no fear of ruining your nice expensive turbo. Um, these turbos are pretty expensive to buy a new one. You're talking 1500 bucks which is about average for most turbos I think new. Um, but this is kind of also a rare turbo it being twin scroll. And it's basically a Japan JDM turbo. So that's basically it. Um, just don't forget to torque everything down. Replace the gaskets if you can. Um, especially the exhaust gasket. This goes on like that. Um, it looks pretty used. I'd probably reuse this one though. Uh, it's still got a little bit of life left to it. The downpipe gasket here has some damage right there, which 
technically the ceiling surface is around this lip here. It's a little bit thicker. Um, but I'll probably get a new one of these. And if it leaks, and you re if you reuse it and it leaks, it's kind of a pain in the butt later to fix it. So make sure that's uh, something you think about. Have a good day. Like and subscribe if you like it. Uh, my battery's dead, so I'll let you go. Have a good day. Bye.